Hey everyone, Dan at Ochoco Bushcraft. Well, I'm out here on a cold, snowy, wet morning. It snowed last night up here in the Ochocos and uh, turned to rain. But up here at the higher elevations, I'm looking at the hill behind me here, there's still snow. So winter's not through with us yet. And if you look back over here behind this uh, big pine tree, I've got my AquaQuest Defender 7x10 tarp set up out here today. I've got a small fire pit made in front of it and some uh, kindling and whatnot gathered up. But I'm also out here with something else. I'm out here with Horace Kephart's book, Camping and Woodcraft. Now, if you don't know who Horace Kephart is, he actually was a backwoodsman slash mountain man who just spent decades living and traveling in the backcountry. And over a hundred years ago, he wrote this book detailing his knowledge, his wisdom, and his experiences. And uh, I discovered the book about 20 years ago and absolutely loved it. And just to mention it, uh, this is not the regular edition that you would just get on Amazon, but this edition is put out by the Great Smoky Mountain Association in Tennessee. It has an additional 80 pages of biography, including um, old black and white photos like this of his cabin that are not in the other edition. But I thought it would be cool because, you know, I, I really liked this book a lot when I first discovered it. And I've reread it several times and I've learned from it. I've also got a lot of uh, joy, you know, the first time I read it. And I would come to these places and find where what he was doing paralleled the same things that I had been doing that I had discovered on my own out here. And so that was uh, really nice in itself. But it's a great book and I highly recommend it. And I've learned a lot from it. And I thought it would be really cool to maybe just start a series out here. We'll call it uh, In the Wisdom of Kephart. And from time to time, when I'm out here, We'll do something from the book. It might be a shelter. It might be a fire. We might talk gear and tools or some other skill. But just every once in a while when I'm out here for a day, grab his book and do something. So Horace Kephart said in his book that there were four things that were always in his pockets no matter what. One, a compass. Now I have, I'm using modern technology variants of what he carried obviously but idea and principle pretty much the same he always carried a compass in his pocket so i have with me the sunto uh, mc2 and actually there's an old pine snag down over that hill so we're going to use the compass to guide us down to that location Next thing he always carried in his pocket, no matter where he went, uh, was a jackknife. It had a two blades. One of them he mentioned was a three inch blade. Now, again, modern technology. This is a Victorinox Forester with the traditional wood handles, Swiss Army knife. It does have a three inch blade, which locks, and I found that to be a plus. But I have to also say my main reason in choosing this knife is because of the name, the Forester. My dad, who passed away about four years ago, spent the vast majority of his life, over half a century, out here working in these same mountains as a forester. You know, five days a week in, out here in these beautiful mountains. He hunted here. Uh, brought home many elk, many deer, fished all of these mountain streams, um, camped and hiked, and of course took me with him and taught me how to do all of those same things. I grew, grew up fishing, hunting, hiking, camping with my dad, sleeping under an old canvas tarp in our sleeping bags, looking up at the stars, and uh, just, uh, you know, brings back a lot of memories. But to honor my dad, because this knife is called the Forester, I've chosen it, so I'm honoring his memory. 
The other two things that uh, Kephart always had with him was matches in his pocket. Again, modern technology. These are the Uko windproof, waterproof matches, which are always in my pocket out here. Give me about 15 seconds of burn time. And the final thing that he always had was some type of a handkerchief, bandana, and I have mine right here. So using these four things that Horace Kephart always had in his pocket, we're going to go up over this hill. We're going to get some uh, dead pieces of kindling. We're going to process it down into some fine twigs and maybe a few curls and whatnot that we can ignite with the match. We're going to seal it up in the bandana and use the compass to get back to camp. So I need a bearing. And I know just from being out here that it's down over this hill pretty much in a straight line from where I am. But I'll take a second bearing up on top of the hill if I need to. So put the uh, needle in the doghouse as they call it. And I'm going to be traveling at looks like about 258 about 258, oh, 260, 260 degrees. So this is our direction of travel. It's not going to probably line up perfectly when I hold it up in the camera. It's because I'm moving it. But our line of travel is 260 degrees. So our back bearing is 80 degrees. So when we need to get back from camp or back to camp, I'll just spin this around to 80 turn around, follow it right back up and over the hill. All right, let's go get some wood and get some fire. Okay, so big pine snag over there behind me. There's a log here or a stump here. Somebody sawed off a uh, old dead snag here and took it home for firewood. So I'm gonna use this as a place to uh, gather my materials. So I brought back just an assortment of broken branches that I broke off that old snag using these items that I showed you earlier that Kephart always had in his pocket. Get some fine twigs, fine shavings, and go back and see if we can't get fire going. It's cold out here. All right, I don't want this blowing all over. Let's see if that'll hold it down. Okay. Outside is damp, so I'm just gonna get rid of that. And see if I just can't make some curls. And I don't want really fine curls because I'm not trying to um, get them to take a spark. I actually want curls and just shavings that are thicker so they'll give me some burn time because everything out here is damp right now. Except for, you know, getting down inside of wood. So I actually just want some thick curls and some thick shavings. And like that right there, that will give me some burn time. With match. So I'm going to work on uh, some of these various pieces of wood. This one's nice and dry down inside. Like I said, the outside was damp, but the Inside, you can hear that crinkle snap between my fingers. I said, I'm not trying to make anything fancy. I'm not trying to make feather sticks. I'm not trying to make real fine curls because I'm going to be using a match 
that's got some burn time to it rather than trying to get things with a spark. I just want to get a big pile of these that I can take and then also some of these smaller ones. Let's see if I get the outside off so it's dry. Yeah, dry inside. I'll take some of these smaller ones and see if I can't just make like some toothpicks. A little bit thicker than that. Like that. That I can't lay up on top of all those shavings and curls. And just go through here and uh, like I said, I'm going to make curls, shavings, some little fine toothpicks. Even like that right there. So I can pile that up on top. So I'm going to work on that for a little bit and get a nice uh, pile and then I'll get you guys back on. Okay guys, been working here for a couple minutes now and got me a nice pile of shavings and cut some fine little twigs like when I get down here and my shavings are so small. Just break that little piece off and put it in there. And all right, I got a bunch of loose ends here to gather up. And we'll take that back down to camp. See if we can't get a fire going. So let's turn this around, spin it. My back bearing was 80, and or actually, there we go. Here we go. Perfect. All right. Gather this up. And let's go see if we can't get fire. Okay. I'm in front of my tarp. I got my little fire pit here. I'm keeping my fire small because I got my AquaQuest Defender tarp set up right behind me here, and I wanna manage the embers. So I'm deliberately gonna keep the fire small and um, feed it lots of small dry stuff, like what I've got here, and then sit close to the fire. But uh, I've got nice um, protection from the wind. The wind's coming this way. So the embers should all go off that way anyway, but my back is protected from that cold wind. And uh, once I get some coals in here, this is gonna put out enough warmth. So let's see, we use the compass to get back down here. We use the knife to uh, process a whole bunch of little fine shavings and twigs and curls and whatnot. Let's see if we can't get our fire going. kind of spread those out right here make my nice pile of them and then I got some small dry stuff here to spread out on top got a couple of those little twigs I brought back Okay, so 
using modern technologies version windproof waterproof match so if we can get all those little shavings burning get some stuff on top get this start burning down through all the layers i've made just like a miniature upside down fire here and uh i got plenty of dry stuff gathered up to start putting on top of it There we go. It's going to be a slow taker. I can't get some more over here in those flames. Block the wind here for a minute. There we go. Yeah, we're taking now. Just had to block that wind. That wind was blowing it pretty good and trying to put it out on me. Keeping that wind off it for a couple seconds. Everything's just a little damp, so it's taking its time catching. All right, now I'm gonna be real gentle here and just put on a little bit at a time. I have to baby this one a little bit. There we go. It's doing its thing, it's just doing it really slow. And that wind. There we go. Give a little wind of my own. Even a lot of those little shavings I was making were damp. So they're slow in taking. Where it's gonna go now. So I guess we could call this Kephart's EDC kit. Matches, bandana, 
compass, and what he called a jackknife. So I'm going to sit here, keep babying this for a little bit, but it's starting to burn now. You can hear it snapping and popping. And like I said, I'm deliberately keeping it small today because of the, the wind and the tarp being right here. But the way I've got things situated, I think it'll be good to go. So that's gonna that's gonna burn. Once this get, top layer gets going good, everything will start dropping down and ignite those. And then I got a bunch more stuff that size laying here because I want to keep it small. I don't want, like I said, I just don't want it to get too big on me. All right, guys, there you go. In the wisdom of Kephart, matches, small knife, jackknife, bandana, and a compass to get to and from. And as I said, from time to time, we'll just come out here and pick something out of his book and uh, give it a shot, see how it goes. Thanks, guys, for watching Ochoco Bushcraft. Take care.